Hi everyone, uh, welcome. Today we're going to be looking at relative humidity. Uh, hopefully it stays in focus the whole time. We'll see if that does it. Um, but relative humidity, kind of hard to understand, maybe not, depending on the way that you actually think about it. Uh, relative humidity is the way that people usually think about the amount of moisture in the air. So you say, oh, it's super humid. You're saying it, there is a high percent relative humidity. Uh, if you say, oh, it's really dry out, then you're saying uh, there's a low percent relative humidity. Now that is based on the absolute humidity, which is measured in grams per cubic meter. So imagine you have a, a cubic meter of air. So it's a three foot by three foot by three foot box of air. And then you're measuring the actual grams of water vapor in it. So like grams, you know, I don't know how much a gram is. I should have measured that. But let's say a gram is, is this much water, um, but it's an actual weight. So how much water do you have in that cubic meter of air? That is absolute humidity. Maximum humidity is the maximum potential for vapor in your air. That is based on air temperature. Um, as you probably hopefully saw in the lecture notes, warm air uh, expands, the, the air molecules are less dense, so there's more room for water vapor in the air. So warm air holds more vapor. And then cold air, those air molecules contract, they come together, so there's less room in the air. Uh, so that cold air holds less water vapor. So maximum potential actually increases and decreases with air temperature. So it'll go up as uh, air gets warmer, and it'll go down as air gets colder. So on a daily basis, the maximum humidity changes with temperature. Now, relative humidity changes inversely to that um, because relative humidity is how full of water the air actually is. So as temperature increases and decreases during the day, the amount of water in it stays the same uh, while maximum humidity increases and decreases. So air temperature uh, is going to be inversely related to uh, relative humidity. Kind of like that. Yeah, you can see the red. Cool. Now, um, one way to think about that. I've got some cups here. This is a normal, like, 16-ounce pint glass. Uh, it's got the gradations on here. Uh, thanks, bottle logic. Um, but 16 ounce pint glass, it's like a little more than half full. Cool. So air uh, temperature is going to change throughout the day and that's going to change maximum humidity. Think of maximum humidity as the cup here. This is the maximum potential for vapor in the air. Uh, it's not necessarily full. Uh, absolute humidity is the actual amount of water. So it's how much vapor do you have in your body of air? Well, a maximum is how much could you have? So uh, during the day, let's say it's 70 degrees in the, like, at 10 a.m., and our maximum humidity uh, could hold this much, uh, but our absolute humidity, we have this much water. So our relative humidity, what would you say? This is like 60% full. So we could say the air is at 60% relative humidity right now. So we're not totally full. We could put like 40% more in there. So 60% relative humidity. That's kind of medium humidity. For Southern Californians, we would think 60% is kind of humid for us because it's it's normally pretty dry here. It's normally like 20 to 40% relative humidity. Okay, so day goes on. It, it gets to like 2 p.m. warmer part of the day. So air's capacity for vapor increases as it gets warmer. This is a 20 ounce pint glass. So we've got our current vapor at 70 degrees. Let's say it heats up to 80 degrees Fahrenheit in the afternoon. So our capacity for vapor increases. We have the same amount of water. So our absolute humidity is the amount of water that we have. But now because the cup is bigger, this is a 20 ounce cup instead of a 16 ounce cup, then the air can hold more water so that uh, relative to how much water you actually have and the potential for water, our relative humidity decreases. So now this is closer to like half full. Uh, this says we're at uh, 10 ounces 
of water out of 20 ounces. So this, this cup is kind of a bad shape, but this is an actual half full cup of water. Okay, so even though, yeah, I realize it doesn't look like it's half full. Um, even So later in the day, uh, it gets colder, sunset, so it's nighttime. And let's say that uh, we go down to 70 degrees. Okay, so we're back at what we were in the morning, like 60% relative humidity. And then it gets even colder. So it goes from our 70 degree air down to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. 60 degrees Fahrenheit is colder, so our maximum potential drops, our air loses the ability to hold vapor. So instead of being a 16 ounce cup, I should have measured this, uh, we're going to go down to this small glass, so this is smaller, you can see that. Um, so as the air cools, max humidity drops, we have the same amount of water in the air. So humidity, relative humidity increases. To the point where, oh look, our, our uh, air is full of water. Humidity keeps dropping, humidity keeps dropping, humidity keeps dropping. And what happens? Precipitation. So this air that's colder and has a lower maximum humidity is now saturated. It's full. It's at 100% relative humidity. Uh, and precipitation happens. And so on a normal basis, that precipitation is gonna be rain. Sometimes if it's super cold, that precipitation might be snow. If you're unlucky and in a thunderstorm, maybe it's hail uh, or one of the other types of precipitation. But usually, most of the time, uh, it's gonna be rain. So saturated air, it's full, it's at 100% relative humidity. Uh, absolute is the same as the maximum. It precipitates. Uh, when that happens, if you look at a thermometer when it's raining, uh, that temperature that the air is, when it is saturated, when the air is full, that's called the dew point temperature. So if, let's say in our hypothetical, it was 60 degrees Fahrenheit when we got saturated, uh, then our dew point in that case is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So when you look at the weather in the morning, like you're getting dressed, you want to decide, do I wear a jacket, do I wear pants, do I wear t-shirt, shorts, whatever. You might also look at like the, the percent chance of rain. So, okay, 20% chance of rain. So in California, that's kind of high. And that's like, okay, get your boots on. There's a storm coming if it's 20% chance. Um, but that is based on partly thinking about how likely is the air to get down to the dew point temperature. If the dew point temperature based on absolute humidity is something really low, like 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you've got a small amount of water in the air, let's say. It's like 10% relative humidity or 20% relative humidity. How cold does it have to get for the glass to shrink all the way for this to overflow? It's gotta get really cold. So that might be like 40 degrees Fahrenheit uh, in order to get to dew point. So then you think about, okay, is it likely to get to 40 degrees Fahrenheit today? No, okay, 0% chance of rainfall. Now, if you're cold already and you've got lots of humidity, okay, we're at 80% relative humidity and it's cold already, then a weather person might think, okay, how likely are we to get cold enough for the for this cup to fill up? Uh, we're at 60 degrees and we're at 80% relative humidity. Could it drop down to 55 degrees Fahrenheit? Sure, okay, let's say 80% chance of rain. Um, now, there's a little bit more that goes into that calculation, but that's kind of the gist of how they figure it out. Uh, Questions? No? Cool. Hope that was helpful.